So there's a problem. A lot of people are not able to retire at the traditional age of 65 because they don't have enough money in their accounts or their investments, or whatever the case is. And that is very sad, especially when you consider that we live longer now and people are not able to retire at a certain age. And it's looking like they're retiring more so at the age of 74 now. The root cause of this is because of the simple fact that no one really knows how much they should have saved by a certain age. So this video is all about the average savings by age. That way you will know how much money you should have saved by whatever age you are right now, whatever point in life you are right now, you're gonna know the answer by the end of this video. I'm Reggie Bryant and thank you for tuning in today. We're going to get started right now. So first things first guys, this video is all about net worth. And what net worth is, is all of your assets put together. So your cash, your investments, your retirement plan, businesses, real estate investing, whatever the case is that you have going on that is bringing money in, minus your liabilities such as cars, houses, your bills, you get the idea. So that's what your net worth is. That's what I'm talking about when I say this is how much you should have saved. I'm not just talking about just in your savings account. I'm talking about liquid cash plus investments plus retirement fund plus whatever else you have going on. So just so we're clear there, we're going to really get started. So I'm going from the age of 20 all the way up to the age of retirement, which for this video say we're going to say is the age of 65. So we're going to start with the average savings by age 20. Are you ready for this? Zero dollars and zero cents. In fact, most 20 year olds or 20 something year olds have negative net worths because of debt, such as student loans, credit cards, or they have debt because they made an unwise decision and bought a car that they could not afford. And now they have to pay monthly payments on that car and it's affecting their finances. Or they might've moved into an apartment without a roommate or even with a roommate in a lot of cases, and because they're paying bills, they have their, their car payments, they have their student loans, they have their utilities, and they have their rent. Right there, right there is why a lot of 20 year olds are unable to get ahead. And when you factor in the low income paying jobs that the average 20 year old has, th there's no wonder. And then when you factor in the cost of living, you really have to think about all these variables, and that's really why the average 20 year old is not worth more than zero dollars and zero cents. And then, also, just to be clear, in this video, I'm going to definitely, definitely go over averages, but I'm also going to go over medians when it comes to net worth of anyone of any age, because average is just good to know, but the median is what's more accurate because the median specifically goes along the middle and it knows that the outliers are the outliers and uses some really special mathematical formula to go through it, but it's way, way, way more accurate than the average because the average is just basically throwing a bunch of numbers into a blender and dividing it. And you're not going to get a correct depiction of what should be what you have in your savings account. So don't get discouraged when you hear some of these average networks. Look at the median because that is way more accurate for you. And also, if you are one of the few 20-something year olds who are actually able to work a full-time job, start your 401k immediately. Right now is where it makes all the difference. I don't care if you're you know, making the lowest pay in the facility that you're in right now. Like Having a 401k is going to secure your future. It just will. All right, so how much should you have saved in your 30s? Well, here's where things start to jump up. According to the Federal Reserve's the average family, and again, keyword family, has a net worth of $76,200 for their entire net worth. And then the median is $11,100. Now keep in mind, these both of these numbers are factoring in families because typically people in their 30s have families. They have two sources of income, husband and wife. So you gotta keep in mind, this is factoring in people who are single, these are people who have families. So some people recorded, you know, their dual income for their entire household, you know, or if they're single completely and, you know, they're, they don't have a significant other or anything, then they're just reporting their one source of income, which is themselves, you know, their job or whatever the case is. And then you have to also think about people who were 
blessed to be millionaires at such a young age. There's those outliers who make ridiculous amounts of money, like those people on CNBC Make It, who are making like $210,000 at like 25 years old, or the, the 28 and 30 year old millionaires, and where the husband and wife are like, they work regular jobs and they make pretty high salaries on the regular jobs, but then on top of that, they they invest in real estate. Or some people do YouTube, like Graham Stephan. He was on CNBC Make It, and they were you know showing how he was a millionaire and how he where he's living at and all that good stuff. And there's just all these variables that should really be taken into account. Like it's not normal for this to happen, but it is ideal and it's something that I think everybody should aim towards. Though that's factoring all those in there, so. Don't get discouraged when you see a net worth like this because a lot of people in their 30s don't have that $11,100. Even at the median of $11,100, that sounds high because a lot of people don't have that because they're still drowning in debt from school, from cars, credit card debt. There's so many different forms of debt that someone in their 30s could be facing that we just don't know about. So keep that in mind when you listen to these net worths. A good rule of thumb is when you're in your 30s, you should have a full year of income and that should be your net worth. That's how it should be when you're in your 30s. So from the time that you're 21 to 30, that's what you should aim to have. And I somewhat disagree with the advice that, saying that you should have a full year of your income saved because what happens when you're 21 and then you're 23 and then next thing you know, your salary jumps up 12K and then next thing you know, you get a promotion and then it jumps up again. And then if you're in a really lucrative business and you're in a really lucrative field, then your salary is going to tend to jump. So in some cases, it's not really going to be that feasible to save that kind of money if your income literally doubles in less than 10 years. And it happens every single day. So keep that in mind. And this advice is really set for people who have more consistent incomes where they're generally like this. And then it, it might move up 3% a year, whatever the case is, based off performance or just based off the fact that you've held that job for a certain amount of time. That's just generally how it is. But that's my advice to you. Yes, and with the average annual income of the average American being 50K a year, and the average amount of debt is over $37,000 for the average American, it's very hard to say that anyone should have that net worth of $11,100 at the age of 30 or within their 30s because of the simple fact that it's hard to have that much amount of debt. You only get paid 50K a year and you pay bills. So between there, you're probably gonna get a negative number. So it's understandable if you don't have that net worth. If you're at the point in life where you're already in your 30s and you're behind financially, you can still get ahead. You just have to save, you have to budget, you have to invest when you can and really make what you can of the money that you are getting so it can one day work for you and I actually have a video about that as well. All right, so if you've been wondering how much should I have saved by 40, here's your answer. The average savings by 40 is a whopping $288,700 while the median is just under 60K. Now again, there's a bunch of variables that people are not looking at when you're looking at this. There's a point I brought up earlier, but then you also have to think about the simple fact that a lot of 40 year olds, they have houses. And in the article that I read it specifically says that what skewed the numbers ridiculously with this age group is the fact that they bought a house. And society sees when you buy a house, they see it as an asset. I highly disagree. I don't think that a house is an asset until it starts to bring money in your pocket. And for most Americans, houses don't do that. They do the exact opposite. Now, if you're a real estate investor or if you're renting out rooms in your house, yeah, then you can say your house is an asset. But if you're living in your house and you're paying the mortgage and the utilities and the maintenance and all the other stuff, liability, that's what it is, it's a liability. To add, by the time you're 40, you should aim to have double your annual salary. Also, I would like to add that there's a lot of other factors that really aren't taken into account. When you see these numbers, people don't think about the few parents in the world who are able and willing to pay their kids through college, typically putting themselves at a financial disservice and that can lower the numbers of that net worth. Also, it's not 
factoring in the divorce rate, which is ridiculous, by the way, and that can obviously have an impact on your finances. And here's another thing. If you're in your 40s, definitely have your 401k dialed in. Make sure you have started it already because I can't tell you how many 40-something-year-old people have come up to me bragging that they have 50k in their 401k. And I'm like, what? Oh my God. That's not okay. You can't retire off of that. So just think about it that way. Think about longevity. Start investing in your 401k if you have not already. All right, you're gonna notice a pattern here and I'm gonna start sounding like a broken record pretty soon. So to kind of shift the focus off of that, when you're in your 50s, you definitely need to have triple your annual income. You just do. And the median net worth for a 50 year old is $124,200, which that's, it's starting to look a little more realistic now and more on par with what most people have today. Because like I said, most people can't retire. I really meant that they really cannot retire. And the sad thing is a lot of them don't realize it because they never really thought about how much money it really takes to retire. Like to a lot of people, a million dollars sounds like a lot, but really in the grand scheme of things, it's not because if you, if you retire with a million dollars, you're still not really gonna be able to live comfortably and then have money left over to do stuff that you wanna do, like go on vacation or go certain places or go visit family or do this or do that. And we're not even including medical bills that, you know, that risk increases as you get older. So there's a lot of things that, that people don't think about when it comes to retirement. But anyways, the average net worth for a 50 year old is typically $727,000. And that's a lot. That's a lot. And that's really where it should be because when you're in your 50s, you are getting dangerously close to retirement. So when you really think about how much you need to have saved by retirement, if when you're in your early 50s, if you have 727,000 already in there, okay, you're you're looking pretty solid. You're going to hit that 1 million at least. I mean, definitely more than that, but you want to at least hit that 1 million. So when you're like let's say you're 50 years old, you're going to want to have that much money in your 401k. You just will. All right, we're gonna further break this pattern by letting me show you this real quick. When you're in your 60s, you're gonna definitely, definitely wanna have six times your annual salary. And here's why. When you're in your 60s, a lot of things are taken care of. The house is probably paid off. Multiple vehicles are probably paid off. Your kids are probably through school. So you have very little financial responsibility for them. They can probably take care of themselves. They probably have jobs. And there's there's a lot of things that should be taken care of. Your, your 401k should definitely, definitely be maxed out. And you should have definitely been starting to put more towards that as you're able to. And honestly, I think your 401k should be maxed out anyways, no matter what age you are. But some people aren't always able to put in as much. So when you get older, that opens up opportunity, as long as you don't make bad financial decisions, it opens up financial opportunity to put more money within your 401k or other investments and also put your money into other areas to make your money work for you, such as a business, such as real estate. Now, here's another reason why I make such a big deal about median versus average. The outliers are ridiculous. When you're in your 60s, the average net worth is 1.67 million, which again, that's how it should be but it's not, it's not. And the median is 187,000. Do you see how drastically different that is? The median is more accurate to what America looks at. So don't ever go by averages, but I'm just sharing the numbers with you because I think they're good to know. And when it's finally time to retire, you're gonna need at least $1.06 million. The rule of thumb is if you're, if you make over $70,000 right now, you're gonna need more than $1.06 million when you retire to live comfortably and pretty much do what you're doing right now just without having a job. That's just, that's how it's gotta be. And the median net worth of a retiree is $224,000. Crazy, just crazy. So I hope that during this video you learned that Numbers are, 
people don't think about these numbers. And if they did, I guarantee you, the numbers in the article and that were expressed in this video would be a lot different and a lot higher. People that have extremely high salaries are the people who typically understand these numbers, that have planned ahead, that have started investing at a very early ages and have started businesses and have done this stuff. And then the outliers that are on the way low end are people who just really don't understand or really make low wages or there's disabilities or there's, there's some type of something that is getting in their way. And then the median is literally just most people disregarding all of the outliers. And I hope that you watch this video and it changes your perspective if you didn't initially understand about how much money you should have by retirement or how much money you should have by 40 or whatever the case is. We should really be looking at money as in monetary goals. We go to work for money. We Basically everything we do is around money. It's whether we're working for someone else for money or we're working for ourselves, like we have our own business for money or we're doing real estate or we're doing investing or something, but none of it is guaranteed and money can be lost at an instant. You guys saw that the stock market crashed. Robin Hood completely went all the way down. It shut down. There's so many people talking about it. There's no toilet paper in the grocery stores. Like nothing makes sense anymore. You know what I mean? So just take this video and, and just get this perspective and, and really, really understand and learn as much as you can about finances, no matter what age you are. But obviously, the earlier, the better your future is going to be. A lot of people are paycheck to paycheck, no matter what salary they are. And that's why a lot of these medians are as low as they are, because of the fact that people don't always make the best financial decisions and it's unfortunate and a lot of people should educate themselves more but this is the channel to go to if you want to get on track financially if you want to learn about saving more money making more money skills that are required the personal development behind making money that is what this entire channel is about i hope you guys like this video i'm reggie bryant this entire channel is about personal growth and personal finance so you can control you control your finances and control your life thank you so much for watching Hey guys, Shane here. So this video is going to be all about how you can go about calculating your net worth and comparing it to other people that are around your same age. Now the average net worth by age will probably shock you, hopefully in a good way. And the average wealth by age between, you know, somebody who's like 20 or someone who's 30 or 40, there's a completely different. There's a huge gap, especially in this day and age where nearly everybody's in debt. It's great to see where you're at compared to other people who are around your age. This is most important if you're a millennial or you're a young person watching this because you're just going to be shocked at what the average net worth is for your country, for your gender, for your age. And then I'm also going to compare it to other countries and so you can get a really good perspective of where you're at in the world and how lucky you really are if you're watching this from a first world country. So without further ado, let's get started. Gonna jump into the computer right now. Okay, so it's important to note that this information that's on the screen right now is uh, based off of the United States. So it's not Canada, it's not Australia, it's not anywhere else, it's the United States. So do keep that in mind. And this is also calculated based off of households. And this was a really good article by wallethacks.com. So the median net worth for everybody under the age of 35 is 6,900. $100. So this is, you know, everybody grouped together. So 18 through 35, um, all of those grouped together. And then you take the median of all that it's $6,900. So it's not very high. And this could be due to several factors. I think a lot of it has to do with how much debt people are in. I mean, even people who become doctors under the age of 35 probably have a negative uh, total net worth because they have to pay like $100,000 to get their doctorate. But it also could be due to just making poor choices. So for instance, you know, buying an expensive car that you can't afford, going into debt for that, taking out a payday loan, not saving, not investing your money, not keeping a budget, spending way more than you need to on things like food. All of these things contribute to this low $6,900 median net worth. Now moving up to the 35 to 44 year old age bracket, it seems like this is the age where people kind of start to get their stuff together. You know, they've got a steady job, they're saving money, they're starting to invest, maybe think about retirement. And so their net worth jumps up to about $45,000, $46,000 almost. And then moving on to the 45 to 54 year old age bracket, they finally hit $100,000 median net worth. So probably around like 49, 50 years old, people hit that $100,000 median net worth. Now I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the very last age bracket here, the 75 plus. 
So generally, um, you, see, you see that the net worth actually goes down a little bit and your highest net worth is between 70 to 74 years old. Um, and I think the reason for that is because people tend to retire around 65 to 70 and their peak net worth is probably around the time that they retire just because after they retire, they're gonna be living off of their retirement savings. Now, it's a little scary to think that most people in this age bracket only have $225,000 saved because that's simply not enough to retire on. Now, a lot of people this age also might have a pension. That's something that was very common back in the day. It's becoming less and less common, so it's something that we can't really rely on anymore. And then of course they also have social security to help them which is something that may not be around forever there's a lot of people saying it's going to be gone within the next 10 to 20 years so don't rely on that either so it's a little bit scary to see that people are actually living off of $225,000 a year net worth and chances are you won't be able to do that by the time you get that age so it's very very important that you start saving and investing as soon as you can so the big takeaway from this is start investing early Okay, so the data on this next one was gathered by thecollegeinvestor.com. It's a really good study they did. So this actually looks year by year at the average millennial net worth. So you see all the way at the bottom here, uh, at the age of 18, you have a net worth of negative 8,893 because a lot of people at the age of 18, they you know take out college loans and you know they have to pay for that. And then you don't get to a positive net worth until the age of 31. So if you're watching this and you're under 30 years old and you have a negative net worth, you probably are, you know, are very upset about that. But guess what? Almost everybody else under 30 years old also is in the negative. I'm in debt up to my eyeballs. I can barely pay my finance charges. So if you're under 30 years old and you have a net worth of $100, you are better off than most people. Somebody help me. Now do keep in mind, this is the average and not the median. They are calculated a little bit differently. So you can't compare this one to the last slide that I showed you. So the interesting thing to note here is, like I mentioned earlier, you know, past generations had other things that they could uh, count on for when they got older. For instance, baby boomers had pensions and they had social security as well as other programs that would help them out when they got older. Generations before the baby boomers, you know, they relied completely on their family. So, you know, when you got old, your family would take care of you. And that doesn't always happen in this day and age just because a lot more people rely on the state. And another thing I want you to notice here is once they actually get back to that point where they have a positive net worth, their net worth starts going up extremely quickly. It starts compounding. And the reason for that is probably because they're starting to invest and they're starting to go into retirement accounts and savings accounts. And the thing is, is most people don't start doing this until around 30 to 35 years old. So if you just start doing this at a younger age, you'll have a huge jump start on everybody else. And I talk about this in a lot of my videos is the difference, you know, in just a few years, like three years, five years, 10 years, can make a absolutely huge difference in the long run when it comes to the power of compound interest and how your investments and savings can be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars higher than other people if you just start investing the same amount just a little bit earlier. Now, I also wanted to go into your net worth by gender a little bit. So earnest.com did a study where basically they compared uh, a lot of different things, but the most interesting one was gender. And as you can see here, the male gender has a $12,188 net worth, whereas females have $5,541 net worth. So that's about a eh, six to $7,000 difference. And uh, there's a lot of reasons for that, but the biggest reason they found, if you go to the bottom here, the biggest difference here, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the study, was investments and retirement savings. So men had $17,000 almost in their retirement savings and 10,000 in their investment savings at the same age as women, whereas women only had 12,000 and uh, about 7,000. So that makes up the majority of that six to $7,000 difference right there. So for some reason, men are deciding to invest and save for retirement at an earlier age than women. Now this video on net worth would not be complete if I didn't also go over average salary by age. So as you can see, uh, from the age of 20 to 24, the average salary is somewhere around 
$29,000 a year for people who are working full time. As you get a little bit older, it increases quite a bit to about $41,000 a year, almost $42,000 from the age of 25 to 34. And then the age 35 to 44, it jumps quite a bit again, about $51,000. So that's another $10,000 jump. That's pretty significant. But this is where it gets interesting right here, guys. From 45 to 54, it only raises to about $52,000. That's only a $1,000 jump. So as you can see, uh, the increase from ages 35 to 44 to 45 to 54, that 10 year difference does not make much of a difference. And I'm not sure what the reasons for that are. There could be a million different reasons. The first thing that comes to mind is companies do tend to try and hire younger people probably because they don't have to pay as much uh, for health insurance and that sort of thing. I, I don't know though, I, I, I honestly don't know. But it is something to keep in mind if you're someone who's thinking about trying to retire early, maybe retire by the age of 45 or so, which is absolutely possible if you start investing early and you make really good choices like budgeting and uh, making good career choices. And these are all things I talk about on the channel in my other videos, so go ahead and check those out. Now, if you do want to compare yourself to other people that are the same age, there is a really good site to do that. It's called stackmeup.com. I'll go ahead and link it in the description. So the way it works is like, let's say you're 25 years old and you're a male. So let's go net worth by gender and age. Choose male and 25 years old. And then you enter your net worth up here. Um, let's say, I don't know, let's, let's say, you know, 25, $50,000 net worth. Stack me up. So if you have a $50,000 net worth by the age of 25, your net wealth is ranked in the top 87.81%, and you're about $31,578 more than the average male your age nationally. So you're doing pretty well. If you haven't done it already, you should head over there and just check it out just to see where you're at compared to all of your peers. Now, I do wanna just state again that this is compared to your peers in the United States of America. So let's just really quickly go over and check how the rest of the world is doing. So I wasn't able to find any really good research by age or you know gender or anything like that, but overall, Adults in the United States of America have a $65,000 net worth, and that's median. And then, and then for mean, it's about $391,000 net worth. And this is by far the highest of anywhere in the world. The next one would be Europe, China, and then Latin America, and then the rest of the world. So if you live in the United States or another first world country, you have a ton of opportunity. Now, when they break it down by country, uh, you know, Iceland has the highest uh, median wealth per adult, uh, then Australia, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Belgium, Netherlands, France, Canada, Japan, New, England, uh, New Zealand, uh, United Kingdom, Singapore, Spain, Norway, Italy, Taiwan, uh, Malta, Ireland, uh, South Korea, Aust Austria, and then the United States. So even if you're kind of struggling a little bit in the United States, you're somewhere in the middle, or maybe you're you know below average, you're still doing pretty well compared to the rest of the world. And that's just something to keep in mind. I think business is moving towards being a little bit more international than just advertising to the United States. So skills that you gain in the United States, you can probably take and then use arbitrage, make a lot more money somewhere else while you're living there, and then have much lower cost of living. This is a really big opportunity that you could take advantage of in the next 10 to 20 years. And that's what this channel is all about, is identifying the big opportunities that are in the world right now. So go ahead and like, subscribe, comment down below, uh, hit the little notification button, and check out my other videos so you don't miss anything that I put out in the future. Have a good one and bye for now.